How's it going? Blah. Ah. Hey. Ah. Ah. Hi. What's up? Ah. 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 What are you doing? What do you mean? I thought it was obvious. No, it's not. I mean, it's... Oh. Story ideas? Why are you doing this? They come out at all times? Let's just have a sad and talk about it for a minute. But first, a word from our sponsors. What? That's right. It's me. I sponsor my own video. Having trouble with writing? Would you rather be writing? Watch me. As I say stuff to a camera about writing. Back to the video. Hey guys, it's me, WC, talking to you again about how to get ideas. Story ideas. Today is probably the easiest portion of this whole series. If you've missed a video, there will be links down in the description below, or if I've figured out how to put a link up there, it'll be there. I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. So, I'm gonna go over five tips, because I seem to like five. Five, 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 five. Five tips as to how you can get ideas for your stories. The easiest tip is number one, live. That's right, friends. In order to get story ideas, you actually have to live your life. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do that simply because any and all ideas I could give you involve going outside. If you're watching in April of 2020, you know what's happening. If you're not, you can always use the Google monster to figure that out for you. But because we get to be inside and work on writing skills, well, I've got some ideas for how you can live. Now, you don't want to take the really poly oly approach, which if you camped on Disney Channel growing up, like I did, because we had a lot of kids in my family, you've probably seen like many, many, many different shows and cartoons. And one of the ones that we watched was Roly Poly Oly. He's the neatest kid around and he's the swellest guy in town. He's also a robot, an anap anapomorphic robot who somehow lives and he has a baby sister robot. I think he has two of them and he's got parent robots and a grandpa robot. Now I don't know how living works in this universe. I never figured that out. If they are living robots, I wasn't actually sure about how they lived or whether they would die. But there was one episode in Roly Poly Oli where Oli, who is the main character, a child robot who is like five, five because he's in kindergarten i'm pretty sure or tool garden i'm not sure how school works for them either but they were tasked with writing a journal of their life so they basically had to go live and then write about it and then bring it back to class Oli decided that his life was too boring so when his mom was out gardening he made up a story which would ultimately fail him if he turned that in because that wasn't the assignment however for him his mom slash parent parental figure figured it out and so she's like let's just Go do something fun and then you can write about that. So you don't want to make up your life. You just want to experience it as it's going on. Because hint, hint, I will refer to this again. But remember, probably won't be experiencing certain things in your life the same way as you go through life. Just a heads up. This is also the easiest way to get ideas because ideas literally jump out at you. They say, hey, I'm an idea. You should write those down. Speaking of writing those down, you should keep a journal. Oh boy, I'm awake. There was a dream. Right, 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 right. So this dream I had was crazy and I think it would be a great novel. It's about a vampire who glitters in the sun and he has this really weird stocking fetish for this girl who he likes, but it's only because he wants to suck her blood. I think it'd be a best selling. Why are you shaking your head? Well, that became a book already. It's called Twilight. What do you mean it's already been done? Nobody would write that story. I would write that story, but nobody else would. Yeah, hi Stephanie Meyer. And uh, she also had a dream about Edward, which is why she wrote the story. And she had hers the same way? I'm surprised you don't know this. Well, that was a useless dream. Now you can keep a regular journal or a dream journal as I just showed you. Regular journals are a lot of fun. I'll talk about those a little bit more in a second. Dream journals are like the cream 
of the crop. It's what makes people famous. Do you know Harry Potter? Well, there was a Lifetime movie made about it where J.K. Rowling had like a whole dream of Harry Potter. And then she wrote that dream into a book. Do you remember Fifty Shades of Grey? Well, her dream was to make money off of someone else's dream and she succeeded. Although her writing is exceedingly poor. Do you remember Stephanie Meyer in her Twilight series? She dreamed of Edward. And she wrote that dream into a story, which is why Edward gets more description than Bella. Because she didn't dream about Bella, she dreamed about Edward. So a lot of times you can take parts of your dreams or just your whole dream, as I have done before, and make that into a story. A lot of times that does come from stuff that you're dealing with, by the way. So dream journals also help with getting through your emotions. And regular journals just write down your current emo emotions. Look at that. Living your life your way. Another thing you should be doing, and that I mentioned a lot in people watching, third tip, is to pay attention. Living is great, writing it down is great, but you also have to be paying attention. I know your apps are fun, there's a, they're a lot of fun. I know TV's fun, it gives you inspiration, but like, there's a difference between mind dumbing and mind pumping. Mind dumbing involves you not doing anything and letting your mind just dump out its ideas and be dumped upon. You know, everything goes in one ear and out the other because you don't retain any of that stuff but for those who are mind pumping you're going to be pumping ideas into your brain the simple act of writing down an idea right when it comes to you tells your brain hey i'm looking at this stuff and then suddenly like magic your brain begins to work and all these ideas just start coming and flowing to you start jumping out at you and scaring you constantly constantly that's great the best problem you can ever have is to have too many ideas to use. Which is why I give out ideas constantly on this channel. Because I have so many ideas to use. So, this next part is still doing the same thing, but you're going back through all the notes, all the recordings, everything that you've been observing and writing down and paying attention to, and you're gonna pick out just one. Just one of them. And you're gonna describe it in detail. You do this because one, it does make the memory more pungent. You experience it very differently. You know, you add in your five senses, you put in as much detail as you can, and, and then you read it out loud because stories are meant to be said, I, I would say, more than simply written. Although I, I, I do both. I get the book and I read it out loud. And as you're going through and doing all this stuff, moments will, will stick out to you. And plus, you can turn your memories into written work. There are such things as memoirs and personal essays, um, which brings me to number five, linking together two different life events. Now this is gonna pull heavily from one of my inspiration slash thought mentors, David Sedaris. If you wanna see like how he, he lives life and how he basically writes his life and gets paid very well for it, I would suggest you check out his masterclass. I'll leave a link down it. In the description below that's how I remembered him um, but essentially what he does is he lives life and then he writes it down in a journal and then he'll go back through his journal he'll pick out some parts like he'll look at a part and he'll be like yeah that is what I want to write about he'll write about it and then he'll remember another memory that he wrote he'll he might go back and look at that journal entry too he'll link those together and they'll become like this story and have a theme into it. And then he'll usually send it into a publication like The New Yorker or he'll make it into a book by sending it to his editor. Then he's like published. He's had a lot of great books put, put out. And it, when you're reading it, it doesn't, it reads like a book, but you know it's his life because it's definitely got all of his life in there because there's so many memories in each story. And I love it. I love it. Like, just read one of his books. You can read it for free, probably at the library. My library has tons of David Sadar's books, of which I am eternally grateful. But like, writing your journal so that it's meant to be read by more than one person, aka you, will one, help you learn how to write, but two, generate ideas. Because once you recognize that you're writing your life in such a way that other people can read it, you kind of change the way that you write and you become better, just so you know. You can pull a David Sadar's and send these in to publications. If you guys are really interested in the personal essay slash memoir slash nonfiction area, I will in the future put a video up about it in the future, but not now. And those are my five tips. Living, paying attention, keeping a journal slash dream journal, describing events in detail, and then linking those events together. Stories come from everywhere. And when you prove to yourself, to your brain, that you are willing to find stories everywhere and then like make 
everything you find into a story, even events that seem unrelated but remind you of each other, magic happens and they just come flowing to you all the time. And so if you guys liked today's video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification to know when I'm going to post again. You can also comment below on your thoughts and ideas on how you get ideas because I would be very interested to see how you guys do it too. But until next time, I will be trying to uh, keep up my word count for Camp Nano, which as of this moment is 2.6k words a day. Ambitious, I know. So I have to go. See you later, bye.